Okay, let's get to uh, trade chips. What do you want to start with? Well, can I start with what I wrote this morning? Yeah, that's what I said. I want to go to because well, I, that I'm setting you up. It was a rhetorical okay. question. Okay, it's Cause, pronounced cause Manko. No, um, it's not. Because <laughs> Manko and his value to the Canucks. No so one's getting your word of the day today. No, I mean I've I've said it twice actually already today <laughs> on the show, and nobody nobody's gonna get it. This is, this is the easiest word of the day I've ever had. <laughs> um, so because Manko is value to Canucks. Here's the thing, Claude. Let me set the table for you before you get into. Uh, your article here and you've been rolling on articles lately a couple of a uh, couple of articles i've seen of yours over 300 words a <laughs> rare situation i've been uh, on a roll lately so kuzmenko's not under 25 years old right like the players that jim rutherford mentioned this team wants to target yeah kuzmenko could return you the players that jim rutherford has mentioned that they want to target here's the other part of the equation is he's great for vancouver they love what he does with elias Pettersson. He's a great complimentary piece to to what is your franchise player with Pedersen. But he's not lining up with Elias Pedersen tonight, Quads. He's out there playing with Sheldon Dries and Jack Studnika. So, I don't know. It's like, are they trying to boost his value on the trade market? Or are they trying to keep Elias Pedersen happy and playing with him? Because neither of those things are happening. He's I not think... on the first power play anymore. They're throwing Connor Garland out there. So maybe they don't have to buy out Garland. I think they're trying to sign him. <laughs> Like, I think hey, hey, too. I'm fine with this. If the idea is, okay, we're going to play Besser and Garland in the top six so that maybe they get something resembling sure. trade value. So we don't have to give up an asset to get rid of them. We're going to have to retain a bunch of money on Besser's deal that they signed four months ago or whatever, whenever they signed it, right? I, I, I genuinely think, and again, I'm coupling this, and maybe this sounds a little too tinfoil hat-like, but... These OT games where they've had to have guys out with the extra attacker. Mm. It was Lazar one game. Then it was Lane Peterson the next game. Then it was like uh, Connor Garland was out there. Basically, it was everybody but Kuzmenko. And then in Carolina, they did use Kuzmenko. Oh, so we'll see um, what happens. But oh, Alex got the tinfoil hat on me. There we go. Um, but we'll see what happens tonight. I, I'm, I'm interested to see, one, how much time Kuzmenko gets and what it does to his... A, trade value, because I think you and I have made it clear we both think he should be traded, uh, and B, what he's able to sign for if he signs an extension with the Canucks. Now, Frank Servale, our pal over there at Daily Faceoff, wrote today some contract comparables for Andre Kuzmenko. Uh, that was really interesting to me because I don't think friends, Frank, Frank was looking at it through the lens of signing an extension with the Canucks. And I was just, I had the idea to start doing it through the lens of an extension with the Canucks. So I did still include the comparables that Frank put in his, but I want to get to the ones that I included here because I, I spent a lot of time on this, as you said, 1500 words. I think that's the longest article I've written in, I would say almost a year. I would say that that's a very long article for me to write. Turns out that was a lie. Why? Well, you've written a, a statue too. Oh, well, Stanchi's, oh, yeah, obviously. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry. But, like, you know, midday article. Um, my tinfoil hat's gone, so I can sit properly again. Um, but but some of the ones I had here. So there's basically three options for the Canucks. They can go short-term uh, with a bri bridge option. They can go somewhere in the middle, and then they can go long-term. Now, I'm going to go over each one, and I'll try to do it as quickly as possible. So starting with short-term, and I'll get to it right away, folks. This is the one that I think the Canucks are going to be most inclined to sign. This minimizes their risk. Again, remember the sample size, not huge with this player, Chris. So right now the numbers look great. Um, again, I think the Canucks want the numbers to look a little bit worse if they're thinking extension. But uh, right now the numbers look great. Short-term bridge option. This is what I came up with. Uh, the first comp comparable, I'm not even going to say Artemi Panarin first. I'm going to start with Victor Olofsson. Okay. okay? Olofsson signed this past offseason two-year deal with the Buffalo Sabres Sabres and annual average value of 4.75 million. He had 20 goals and 29 assists through 72 games last season before signing this extension. That is obviously a worse clip than what Kuzmenko looks like he's going to be putting up uh, when all is said and done this year. So that's kind of the low level there. And like I said, two year deal, 4.75 million. The other one, and so keep that in mind, okay? The other one is Artemi Panarin. Now, Panarin, I understand he was signed in 2017. The comparable here is the principle of what Panarin and his agent chose to do. And that was after back-to-back 30-goal -back seasons, two. Rem remember, he was there for two years on an ELC, yep. not one like Kuzmenko. Two 30-goal seasons, Panarin, and I understand it was 2017, so the cap hits obviously would be higher if it was signed today. Panarin bet on himself. So here's the intrigue from the player side. 
Panarin bet on himself, signed a two-year deal, went out and basically proved it over a larger sample size and cashed in big time with his current contract with the New York Rangers. I think it's 11.675, uh, something like that. It's uh, second highest paid in the league, right? Yes, it, yeah. yes, exactly. So he cashed in. Uh, he cashed in on that deal. Now, the comparable there, like I said, is the principle of it all. So if you take the dollar figure from Olafson, mm. you take the principle from Panarin, and again, we're also weighing here for the Canucks specifically, they are not in a position um, both financially and on principle to be handing out long-term extensions to wingers, right? Like, we've seen the winger position just get completely devalued, totally. especially on the trade market. Look... And I'll get to more in a sec, but basically what I think is I, I would I think the Canucks would like to do two years. I think that is something I could see Kuzmenko going with as well. Uh, for my final contract, uh, basically prediction of what I think this extension is going to look like, it's going to be two years at $6.5 million if they want to re-sign Kuzmenko. Now, okay, let me throw it at you then. Sure. Sorry, unless you want to add something. Well, I, I got do a have lot. a question. I got a lot okay, well, I got a question for you okay. you can get to first then. You've done a lot of the research now into what the contract value could be. We've also talked a lot on the show about this situation in its own right. Now that you see a number that you'd think you can project being the deal, does that change your mind on trading Kuzmenko at all? Uh, no. Because we've, for a no, long time here on this show, you and I have been in the camp of, you can get a lot of value back for this player. I think it's a first round plus. I heard uh, today Yaremchuk uh, and Mike McKenna on uh, on the Daily Faceoff show, they were chatting about uh, a second plus a prospect. I think it's more than that. If, if it's a it's second plus a prospect, I think about the two years at 6.5, right? I think about it. Mm -hmm. i not saying it sways me completely, but if, if like we expect, if it's a first round plus, and remember, the other thing to keep in mind, like I just said, wingers aren't super valuable right now, but mm -hmm. it is a very unique situation with Kuzmenko with the cap it. I, in conversations I've had, uh, I've been told that a first round pick is definitely on the table. Yeah. And what I want to say is I think this situation would be very different and potentially they're using talking about a re-signing contract as leverage for teams that say like, Oh, but they want to keep them right. And like, Friedman reporting that the teams that have called, cause there's plenty of interest around the league teams yeah, that have sure. called the Canucks have basically said, we'd like to get this player signed. Yeah, so don't, we're not going to talk trade. Listen, yet. that could be one thing the Canucks could use as leverage, but here's the deal. Dollywall reported this the other day. The agent's the one telling this to Dollywall. You know, Dan Milstein's the one talking that they met and stuff. It wasn't just the Canucks got that out there. This is from the agent. And the agent has nothing to gain on the trade market for Kuzmenko if they talk about them going into conversations about a contract. The Canucks have all of it to gain because they're the ones gaining leverage here. There's no leverage being gained by the agent for the rest of the league if they hear that he's looking to re-sign. You know, the agent's just trying to get money done for him. So I think Kuzmenko wants to stay in Vancouver. Yeah. That's the big thing here, right? Okay. But I, I just think, and, and Winstow's got a point, two, 6.5 for two years is the team win now. That's the thing. Exactly. The two-year deal doesn't make sense to me. The long-year deal is too, too much of a risk, as you said, with the winger market going up. And I get the cap will be up six, seven, eight years from now. But I still agree with Winstow. Like I, like I said, a second plus a prospect, depending on who the yeah. prospect is, makes me think about it. Absolutely. It makes but, me think, but I think you can get more than that still. Yeah, you can get more than that. I would guess that there's lots of teams that would give that up for Kuzmenko services. And that's the thing that's strange to me is like if they were trying to, you know, boost his value, keep him, keep him in your lineup in the playoffs. Or I mean, sorry, what am I doing? Say, keep him in your, uh, on your power play. As the trade deadline approaches, yeah. I just messed up two words. You got to so figure bad. out. You got to figure out what but you're doing with this player. Here's the thing: he's got what 17 goals this season. You have, I think, give or take, I believe there's about 17 games left until the trade deadline. I think it's game 61. Let me double check this. Mm -hmm. I think they need to get to game. Uh, the trade deadline is after the Canucks' 61st game. Tonight's game is their 44th. So yeah, 17 games left. You think you can get another eight goals out of Kuzmenko in those 17 games if he's playing with Pedersen and he's playing on the first power play unit? It's possible. And then you get to the trade deadline and he's, you know, up there with Bo Horvat as one of the top goal scoring players available at the deadline. Under a million. 25 goals hit. making under a million. Tell me that's not worth a first round pick. And I'll tell you that you're wrong because yeah, that's but, worth the first round pick. So, so let me continue here because then we're starting to get into bigger conversations about what he's now worth if the Canucks want to extend him. Okay. Uh, so the main thing. I, I don't think even the like thing the conversation of the extension because there's nothing that works. For I, the I agree. I agree with you. I, I don't think they should they should be extending him. I, I really don't. And I know there's a lot of people out there that say, okay, well, if they do three years at 6 million or three years at 5.5, maybe the Canucks are more competitive uh, in years two and three. 
That might very well be the case, but you have too many wingers on this team right now. And you've got Brock Bester for three years. You've got Connor Garland for three or four, or four years after, uh, no, three years four after more. this season. Three years after this one. Right. Four, including this one. Right, you're right. Um, Okay, so the other comparables, and this is just more so open trade market. Hey, this is what he could get, folks. This is what he could get, it seems like. Uh, Andre Burakovsky is one. Um, the... Seattle Kraken were the ones that signed that deal. Uh, Five-year, $5.5 million AAV. Again, like the Canucks might like that AAV, but they can't They can't go long-term on wingers. Like no. you just can't right now with where this team is at. it's like you have, listen, if you have anything coming down the prospect pipeline, it's wingers. Like maybe Daniel Klinovich turns out. Jonathan LeCarrie-Max scored today. We'll get Pod to that Coles a little bit and later. Hoaglander. Hog, exactly. Yeah, like, like you have to, you have, you have to maximize this asset, yeah. right? And then tell you what, you get a second round pick out of it. If that's all you get, then draft a defenseman, man. Second round defensemen work out a lot. Yeah, like, and second, I'm not, the Canucks like, just don't do it a lot. Uh, Elias Pettersson, third round. He's all of a sudden their best defense prospect. Right, exactly. And he's actually playing well too. Like it's yeah, not it just because they have no other defense. They prospects. did a big feature on him today, actually. Orobro did. So that was kind of cool. I, I watched a YouTube video or some of it. I was, and then, you know, about a minute in, I'm like, this isn't Swedish. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, I'm not going to go over all six comparables here, but uh, it's on CanucksArmy.com okay. if you feel so inclined to read it. But I, I think at the end of the day, Chris, like I went over the ones that make the most sense for the Canucks. And I should mention the Brock Besser aspect because I did use him as a comparable because you don't think Kuzmenko's agent's going to say, hey, well, my guy's scoring more than the guy you just gave 6.65 annually for three years to mm. granted Besser's a larger sample size he's been with the organization longer I understand all that I I totally get that but Kuzmenko's agent is still going to look at that and say okay well how much do you value him because he's played more ice time than Brock Besser yep. um he scored more goals he's put up more assists right he's been a better fit with your franchise center than Brock Besser has and you gave Besser this how are you going to say that my client deserves less than this? I think that's going to be something that gets brought up in those meetings. Again, everything we're saying, Chris, and these are just the facts, folks. Like, I wrote it in the article. You can go read the whole thing if you want. What Kuzmenko could get on the open market and what his agents, in, in all reality, is going to be asking for, the Canucks should have no interest in it. And it's not a yeah. knock against Kuzmenko. It's just where the Canucks are at as a franchise. They need to have a disciplined deadline. We've I keep saying this. it. We've said that. We have to judge the direction off this team from what is told to us. At the start of the season, it was make the playoffs. The last thing we just heard from Jim Rutherford two days ago is the direction of this team is to add younger players so that they can retool. If you want to retool, signing a guy who's going to be 27 in the next 12 months is not the type of player he just told Canucks fans. So if you are going to judge this team and move the goalposts as things change with this team, as the season's gone on, the goalposts have moved from playoffs to now a point of retooling. Okay, a retooling move isn't signing Kuzmenko then. A playoff team is going to sign Kuzmenko. Or a team that really thinks they're going to jump. Sorry, a throat bubble there. Okay. Uh, jumping into a spot of being a playoff contending team, they're going to sign Kuzmenko in free agency this year. Or trade a playoff team is going to trade for him this year. A team that's going into a retool doesn't need a two-year run. And it was funny, like, Rutherford said this, and this was one of the comments that he said that was, you know, criticized quite a bit in the market was like talking about, we need to have these type of players like a JT Miller on your roster players that are going to go out there and, you know, they're going to get paid a lot of money, but they're also going to do some things to produce for you to win. You don't need a bunch of them though, not in a retool. What you need in a retool is what you always bring up with, with Montreal quickly getting draft picks, quickly getting young players. And as much as I love Kuzmenko, he, he's not fitting what Jim Rutherford just told us this team's direction is from this day forward. 